Well, this is the, the way the, the standards come from Restec. They're in a little plastic um, bottle and then the ampule, the glass ampule is inside along with usually a, a little two milliliter vial so that you can transfer the contents of the ampule into the vial. They don't provide a, a pipette which is very handy because without the pipette it, it's hard to get it out without spilling a lot. So it's handy if you have your own pipette. And then um, there's also the, the cracking apparatus. You can crack it with your hands like this. The trick is to put a little spit on the part of the bottle that's going to break. For some reason that makes it break a little easier. And then you don't just crack, you pull it apart. You, you pull this way and that keeps tension on the glass as you crack it. It's safer if you use some kind of a plastic sleeve to cover the neck of the bottle. So Restec sells one called the Safe Cracker or you can just use a piece of silicone tubing. Anything that really slips over the the end of the bottle so that when you crack it it minimizes the risk that you'll cut your finger with a piece of sharp glass. So, um, and I have done that, so it's it's a real risk. So put the put the sleeve over the end of the bottle, put a little spit on the bottle, and then grab it and pull it apart while you crack it, and then it should break nice and clean just like that. So to get the sample out of the, the standard out of the bottle, you take the, the pipette. You could just pour it, but you'll you'll spill a lot if you do. So it's safer and more economical if you use a pipette to suck the sample up and then put it into the vial. Hmm, this feels like it might still be a little frozen. It's not coming out, so I'm going to let it sit there and, and wait a little bit to unfreeze because I took it out of the fridge and um, I think it might be frozen. So that's it. That's all it amounts to. But um, when you when you get the sample transferred, make sure to put a label on the bottle and then label it up good so that you know what it is and when you took it out of the ampule. So I'm going to call this right down on the... I'm going to call this the name of the stuff and then on the back I'm going to put the date that I took it out. That way you can tell if the standard is is old or new. Sometimes you end up with a, a, a bunch of standards, so it's good to have the, t the identity and the date. So that's out of the, the individual 1,000 nanogram per microliter cannabinoid standards. Is that right? So um, if that is right, then um, you need a, an empty bottle to make the dilution. You need the CBD standard from Restec or Ceruleant. This is a, a thousand nanograms per microliter. This is the Delta 9 THC standard from Ceruleant. This is the CBN standard. All of them have 1,000 nanograms per microliter. That's the concentration. Now originally when you get the standards from Cerulean or Restec, they're going to be in ampules. So you'll have to break the ampule. So this is what it looks like. So this would be the, the CBN standard, this would be the Delta 9 standard, and this would be the, the CBD standard. And it says right on the bottle what the concentration of the standard is. It, it'll say one milligram per mil, which is the same as a thousand nanograms per microliter. We like to think in microliters because that's what the GC is capable of swallowing is microliters or nanograms and um, so it's easier to think in nanograms but it's the same whether it's milligrams per mil or nanograms per microliter it's the same 1,000 parts per million. So we want to dilute this down for um, a, a working standard. These are our primary standards and we want to make a a working standard. So to do that you need a syringe that's that's a hundred microliter syringe and you need some solvent to make the dilution. So you can just use the Home Depot denatured alcohol. It's really 50-50 methanol and ethanol and we just need a little bit of it. 
So um, I'm going to rinse my syringe out in the in the denatured alcohol. So I'm sucking it up and squirting it out, sucking it up, squirting it out until I'm sure that I've rinsed the syringe out of anything that it might have had previously. So then we're going to take 100 microliters of the CVD standard, get it exactly 100 microliters, and put it into the empty 2 milliliter vial. So there we go. And then I'll wash out the syringe a little bit just to make sure I don't cross contaminate the Delta 9 standard with the CVD standard. And then we'll take 100 microliters. Make sure I don't have any bubbles. And put the Delta 9 THC into the bottle. And then rinse out the syringe. And then the CBN standard. 100 microliters. Okay. So, simple as that. So we now have, instead of each individual cannabinoid at 1,000 nanograms per microliter, we mixed three of them together, equal amounts. So that means each one now is present in this bottle at 333.3 nanograms per microliter. So I'm going to label the bottle, always label. Make sure you know what's in it because they all look alike once they're in the bottle. So we'll label this 333 nanograms per microliter and then on the back we'll put the date because it's important to know when you made your working standard so that you can replace it every few weeks. Depends on how much you use it, depends on whether you keep it in the refrigerator. But that's how you do it. And you can vary the proportions if you like. You don't have to put equal amounts of each in there. There's actually some logic for putting less of the CBD and CBN because that's what you see in most um, medical cannabis is mostly T THC and just tiny bits of CBD and CBN. But historically we use the, um, the calibration where we have equal amounts of each but you don't have to do it that way. You can make, make it up in any proportion that you like. So thank you, that's all.